Welcome back to the Hackintosh 2018 build series. Now we have every component purchased and ready to build. And I made a detailed guide now on how you can build this machine. It's very detailed because a lot of people who build their first machine at all, a lot of Mac users didn't build a machine before, uh, they will maybe get stuck at some point. And therefore it's very detailed. And I would just say, let's get it on. Let's first begin by unpacking the motherboard. It's the heart of your new Hackintosh. Every hardware component will be installed on or connected to it. It's always beneficial to read manuals first when you get stuck with your build. Let's prepare the motherboard. You can use the plastic sheet that came with the motherboard as an insulator. I personally didn't use something to ground myself before and during the build. And nonetheless, the hardware works as expected. The box was very useful as a basis where you can first build and test everything to work properly and before you put everything into the case. CPU cooler socket. First install the socket on the backside of the motherboard and underneath the CPU socket. Everything you need is included with the CPU cooler. Use the four holes, the bracket itself will just fit in one way. Then get back to the front of the motherboard and put on the black plastic spaces. CPU installation. Next you install the CPU. The corners with the triangles on the CPU and the socket belong to each other. Lift up the lever and then open the cover of the CPU socket. The cover folds off alone later when putting it back down onto the CPU. Be very careful when you put the CPU inside the socket. The pins in the socket are tiny and twist with ease. If you damage your pins, the chances that a motherboard is trash are very high. Also bending the pins back into its position is nearly impossible or at least very hard and often not rewarded with success. I recommend you to use the helper tool for installing the CPU. It's shipped with the mainboard and also has a triangle at one corner. After you install the CPU in the socket, close the lid and put the lever back into its fixed position. The socket cover should pop off automatically. RAM installation is straightforward. Be aware of the small gap in the bottom of the RAM and in the slot. They must match, but you can't get it that wrong anyhow. Open the slot's lever on the right side and push the RAM in. Just push a bit tighter until you hear a click-like sound. As you have two RAM DIMMs, you have to install them in either slot A1 and A2 or B1 and B2. This is needed for optimal performance in a dual channel setup like this. I chose to install the kit in the B1 and B2 for more space between the CPU cooler and RAM. CPU cooler installation. First, put a piece-sized portion of thermal compound on the heat spreader. It will be distributed evenly by the pressure of the CPU cooler onto the CPU die. I used the spatula by a thermal grizzly and a tray of thermal compound, which also worked. Then gently put on the cooler and fasten the screws in alternating patterns until they are snug fit. Don't wonder about the cooler's orientation. The initial idea was to blow the hot air out of the top case. I decided later on to switch the orientation by 90 degrees to have an airflow from the front to the back of the case. Last but not least, you have to connect the fan's cable to the CPU fan header pins at the top of the motherboard. NVMe installation. On the mainboard are two slots for NVMe or M.2 SSDs. I used both slots, but just show how to install one of the SSDs in the second slot. The first slot is underneath the small heatsink near the CPU socket. Just slide the SSD chip into the slot and secure it with a screw from the motherboard's kit. PSU installation part 1. Before you install the PSU, just check all the cables and collect just those that you will need for your build. As it's a modular power supply, this will make your cable management a lot easier. First, install the EATX power cable near the RAM slot. It's labeled EATX PWR for EATX power. 
you have to take care that the cable is plugged in correct. So don't mind if you have to push a bit harder here. It takes some effort to break a motherboard, so don't mind it. GPU installation. Find the correct spot for your card. It should be labeled PCIe X16 slash X8 underscore 1. This is the PCIe slot which shares 16 PCIe lanes with the CPU. You want to put the GPU into this slot to get the most bandwidth. Like on the RAM slots, just open the clamp first, then push in the GPU gently into the slot. The clamp automatically snaps in because of the pressure. That was easy. PSU Part 2 First connect the dedicated GPU. Connect one PCIe slot on the PSU with the power inlet of the GPU at the upper side. This cable should also fit the 12V E80X12V slot on the top of the motherboard. Connect them and you're done. Next up is the test flight. Now connect the wall outlet with the PSU. Add a monitor cable to either a dedicated GPU or motherboard GPU. And also add a USB mouse and a keyboard. Hit the start button at the bottom of the motherboard. This is by the way quite a nice feature as you don't have to connect the switch to a testing. One of the benefits of this motherboard. The system should boot now to the system screen. You should see if every hardware component is recognized and also enter the BIOS. For me the LCD display or postcode on the motherboard showed code 55. This means that the RAM slots are not recognized properly and just fix the problem by checking the RAM sticks and then it just booted fine. A list of postcodes is in the manual of the motherboard. Case study. Everything is ready to be built into the case. Be gentle and cautious when removing the tempered glass side panel, store it in a safe place and leave the foliage on until you are really done with your build. Also remove the other side panel, get all the cables out of the way and grab the box of screws. In this box you will find all the screws necessary to mount your motherboard, hard drives, extra fans, etc. into the case. You also need to unscrew the bracket at the lower back of the case. First, get the screws which are used to hold the motherboard in place. See your manual if you have trouble identifying the correct screws for the job. Screw them into the appropriate holes for ATX motherboards. As the Hero X motherboard has a pre-mounted backplate, you can just put it into the case as is. Position the motherboard's holes directly on the top of the screws. Start securing the motherboard with the next set of screws in a cross pattern. Tighten it just at the end, but not too much. I unmounted the CPU cooler again to get full access to the power connector on the motherboard's top side. Connect a 12V 8-pin cable to the EATX 12V connector on the mainboard. This can be a bit tough, as the new cable and new slots are a bit stiff at first. But you know you're done when it clicked and the security nose is in place. Route the cable to the back side through the cable management slot. The same applies for the 20 plus 4 pin cable. This will be routed through one of the cable management slots on the side of the motherboard. Put it back into its slot and you're done. Now everything besides the GPU should be supplied with power. To first mount the frame for the PSU, on the back of the PSU unit to secure it in place. And before you slide it in, just plug in every cable to make it easier for yourself. The PSU fans are directed downwards to the bottom of the case. This secures some fresh air for the PSU. Next, route the cable tree of the case itself to the motherboard's front side. Because there are connectors for USB ports on the case front indicator LED for hard drive and power off on and idle state, as well as the power and reset button on the case's front. Then we connect the rear case fan to the motherboard and next up is USB 3.1.
After that we just need an adapter to put every cable for LEDs, power switch and LED as well as reset switch on. The adapter makes it easier to connect those cables to the motherboard's pins and should be delivered with the Hero X. This is the other big advantage of more expensive boards. They focus on good usability and a convenient installation process. Next, connect the sound chip with the front, line in and headphone out cable and also connect the front case fan to the motherboard. Now reinstall the CPU fan and heatsink and exhaust the hot air out of the back of the case. First test with Intel's onboard GPU if everything is working. The board posted AO, which is usually a code for all OK. After that you can reinstall the GPU and don't forget the power cable. The power from this PCI slot alone won't be enough. Also don't forget beforehand to remove the two little back blades and secure the GPU with two screws. Some more cable management before we are finally done with your build. And put on the back and front panel. Connect the cables for display network and keyboard and mouse and your new hack is prepared for installing the operating system. I did that in the time being already with Windows 10 to test everything out and benchmark some stuff. If you are also interested in how to do that, drop me a comment. But as you see everything works as expected and the system is booting even though it's not yet macOS. I hope you could extract some information out of this video. I think some of those information are at least useful for you so you can build your machine now on your own. And um, yeah, as you've seen, don't be afraid of breaking something or damaging something. Those hardware components are pretty tough nowadays and it's unlikely that you will damage something. So maybe besides the Intel CPU socket. Next up will be the video about preparing the installer for macOS. Hi Sierra and also uh, how you will install it and what you have to fix to get your macOS installation running on this machine. By now that's macOS version 10.13.6, that's the latest Hi Sierra version I've installed on my machine and uh, if you like to have a video on how to install Windows 10 for example maybe drop a comment below or give a like and yeah just let me know if you're interested as well and then just about doing a dual boot. Hackintosh um, and how this works in conjunction for example with the Clover bootloader where you can select Windows 10 besides macOS, recovery partitions and all this stuff. Okay, um, I think we see us in the next video hopefully and yeah, happy hacking. Cheers!